Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, depending where you are. You are very welcome to join us for this uh, pick session. This is the eighth time we have run this event. This is where innovators get a chance to show their ideas to an audience. So that's you. In case you're not sure with all the virtual events going on that you're attending the right thing, let me just confirm you are at the Process Innovation Challenge preliminary round number two. So hopefully you're meant to be here uh, and thank you for joining us. I would like to introduce our advisory team. The dragons for this round and this year are Yuka Nakasone, who's Globalization, Localization Director at Intento, Alessandra Benazi, who's Director of Localization at ASICS Digital, and Marcus Meisel from SAP, who is Manager of Translation Services Language Experience Lab at SAP SE. I'm Dave Ruan, and co-hosting with me is Alex Burnett. Alex. Howdy. Oh, it's early where you are, Alex. Hopefully, it it's not so early for everybody. But what are we doing here? Well, we're going to cover a little bit about how this works. Each of the innovators, of which there are seven, is going to pitch. You will have an opportunity to send your questions in virtually, if you have questions. The questions will mainly come from the dragons who have already prepared some ideas of things they want clarification on. And when they see the pitch itself, we'll have more. You can send in questions and we'll try and get to those too. You can also chat through the window. And uh, if you like an innovation, you know, feel free to let us know about it. We'll try and call out some of your chats. Keep it civil, of course. We'll do seven pitches. Uh, each pitch is followed by some question time, as I've mentioned, and then we'll do the wrap up. That's it. So you might say, well, what are the rules? Each innovator has three minutes to pitch. They should do it with three slides. Uh, some will be using video, so we're uh, allowing some freedom. Uh, and of course, this is the most important rule you have to remember. So just for being here, uh, you have joined a draw to, with the chance to win a free ticket to Lock Worldwide, which Alex is at the end of July, right? Correct. That'll take place July 28th through the 30th. So we will announce that in the coming days, but thanks for being here. And let's get on with the show. You, you might say, well, Small talk, let's get on and move into the, the real meat of things. Well, if you were here yesterday, you will have seen seven innovations from seven innovators. Today, we're doing the same. Another seven, total of 14 innovators in this round. Uh, and we're going to start off with Andre Zidron from XTM, then Justine Twang from uh, IBM will tell us a little bit about speech to text. Carol from Content Quo will talk about ADA, and I bet by the end of that, you will know what ADA means. Mark is going to talk to us a little bit about WYSIWYG, uh, whereas Natalia will talk to us a little bit about so, some interesting automation that they've looked at um, at Agilent. Remy is going to, again, be on the pick stage. Welcome back, Remy. Uh, and talk to us about instant translation with humans. And Avada wraps us up about watch instead of read. A little bit of intrigue on in that one. Let's see how it looks. And that'll be at the end of the session. Uh, so good to see some new names and a few familiar folks to the pick. I uh, want to welcome everyone along. Good luck to everyone. A small talk is done. Let's get to business. So first off is Andre. Andy is going to talk to us about AI power bilingual terminology extraction. So let's give him control and get on with it. Okay, thank you, David. Oh. 
Okay, so, okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Dragons, and thank you, audience. Um, today, my pick challenge is about AI-powered bilingual terminology extraction. Okay, this is a robust process um, supporting 50 languages bidirectionally using the latest advances in big data, AI, and NLP, providing a 90% accuracy in terms of the terminology extraction itself, producing a productivity improvement of about 80% in terms of the actual terminology process itself. And that translates, pun intended, into a translation quality plus process optimization, 90% ROI. The main ingredients that we use are based on big advances in NLP and AI over the last 10 years, starting with BabelNet, which is a massive lexicon supporting or providing on average 10 million entries for the main languages. Uh, we use 50 out of the 284, um, plus some data harvested from the internet. Next in line, a vectorization probability estimation. I can provide full details of that in the QA session at the end. It's reasonably complex to explain. Then we use the Dragon part of speech analyzer that supports 43 languages and morphological reduction supporting 63 languages plus all irregular verbs in those languages. So the process actually is kicked off by a totally automated AI driven segment alignment. This is a highly intelligent driven alignment process, totally automated, um, works on the same basis as a human being would when aligning segments. Next, we actually do source noun phrase identification. Then we sort by frequency, provide and identify equivalent target phrases. This is the really magical bit. And then find all the surface forms and context and then present the output for review. The output is in the form of an Excel spreadsheet um, that's presented, downloaded by the terminologist. And it provides a column for the main term, all the surface forms, including their frequencies in brackets, the main overall frequency in this term, in this example, the term is actually frequency itself. Then the context with highlighted terms, um, and then the target language, in this case, simplified Chinese, with the surface forms, there's only one surface form here for the Chinese, and the equivalent context sentences. This in totality can then be edited and uploaded as it is in the current format into XTM. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Wow. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, well on time, by the way. Um, and I've been practicing all morning. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, and we heard about magic and dragons and Stuff like that. Wow, great way to start. So, dragons, nice segue to you. Questions for Andy? I have a dragon question, Andy. This is Alessandra. Hi, I Alessandra. Started, hello. I started my career at Dragon Systems. So, I would right. love to hear how that piece fits into this. Like, how okay. do you actually leverage the speech anal analysis data? Okay, um, basically Dragon is a project that was funded by Google based on SyntaxNet um, and the Connell, which is the kind of yearly task for allow, allocating part of speech analysis to many, many languages. Um, and Dragon is a neural network system that uses the Connell data to provide part of speech analysis. 43 languages. So it's a standalone process. You feed the language into it and it will give you the part of speech um, for each token that you pass to wow. it. Wow. I have come full circle. I used to tag right. part of speech a dragon in my very first task there. So ah, <laughs> brilliant. For Italian. Yep. Anyway, ah, thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Anybody interested in the vectorized probability estimation? This is really cool. You can do it in 30 seconds, yes. <laughs> okay, um, basically you take um, a massive amount of data, 
you run it through a whole load of um, trigonometric calculations, working out the proximity of words, and then you allocate 300 real numbers to each token, and then work out the cosine probabilities. Now, it gives you the ability to say, woman is to queen as king is to man, or Athens is to Greece as what is to France. Um, the trick then is to do it multilingually because all the vectors actually are specific to each language. You then have to normalize all the languages um, into one plane. And that's the real magic, which gives you the ability to work out the probabilities of a given word in one language to its equivalent in another language. That's mm. pure mathematical magic. Mm. And it works. Yeah, and uh, I have a question. You said that the output is Excel right now. Yes. And it's proprietary technology from XTM. And yes. I'm very curious how you would implement this technology into your suite. It's going to okay. be a feature or, or, or standalone product. What, what's in your mind? <laughs> It's just a feature. Short, short answer, Andy, if you could. Just... Yeah, feature coming out in the next version next month of XTM. It's part of the okay. XTM suite. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, thank Andy. Uh, okay, really thank you, everyone. Interesting. We learned about dragons there, uh, dragons breeding words instead of fire, <laughs> and uh, vector based stuff. <laughs> so, brilliant stuff, though. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, so, so thank next you, up, Next up is Justine uh, from IBM. So Justine, let's get you set up and uh, get you started. Uh, how, I'm sorry, is this one? Um, I, I can share my my screen. Maybe. Yeah, I think you should have it now, Justine. Sorry about the gremlin there. Uh, so sorry. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes we, we can. can. You're good to go. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Justine. Today, I'm sharing our innovation. The speech to text caption translation. I am from IBM Globalization Center. Our team majorly works on the globalization and translation of IBM products. Recently, we are trying to implement the process and tooling for the video caption translation. To speed up the translation processing, we are considering to utilize machine translation. However, we found the segment contents in the caption file may be an, a problem for machine translation. So we came up with a method to combine the segment automatically. Uh, let me talk about the problem in more detail. We can use speech to text service to generate a caption for a movie, but the service usually break in the in one sentence into segment with different time stamp. The machine translation is not able to recognize the full sentence and the translation may become meaningless. Therefore, we are thinking if we can combine this segment into complete sentences so the translation can become better. Here is an example. The speech to text survives break the Chinese sentence Today's weather is raining into two segments, which are today's weather and it's raining separately. And then the English translation result will become the weather today and it's raining. It's a little bit weird when the two segments are put together. So if we can combine the two segments, the English translation will perfect correctly. Uh, here is our innovation works. First, we can utilize NLP technology to determine the degree of similarity of two segments. 
When a similarity is over the set threshold, we can combine two segments and continue to check the text segment, so on, so forth. We also found that different domain of video content also have different similarity number between two segments. Then we can adjust the threshold by different domain so that the classification will become more correct. For example, the context similarities threshold are different for an action movie and a science education firm. Um, the benefits first, automate Mission combining the subtitle using NLP and machine learning technology can save translator effort. Second, combined segment can improve machine translation quality. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, Justine. Very interesting. Uh, Dragons, have we questions? You mentioned uh, the the threshold for the context for determining whether to combine segments or not. What's it based on, like quality level or risk, or and how can can the user manipulate it, decide where to set the threshold? Mm, the, the threshold is uh, based on the movie, and we we have training the movie and adjust the service hall to become the more correct subtitle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Dragons? Uh, I had a quick question about the context uh, as well, um, Justine. So, um, the context is based on domain, uh, I think. And I was wondering if it works with any kind of domain or if there are any domains that it works uh, with which it works better than others. Oh, um, uh, Louis want to say something. Can you unmute him? Louis Huang. Um, yeah, let's see if we can have Luis answer a question. So, Luis, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Luis, can you hear us? Yeah, we can't hear you, Luis. Seems to be uh, an issue with your audio. Okay, we we might come back. Uh, so, Luis, if the audio issue can be fixed, we may come back uh, a little bit later. But for now, um, let me ask a question in in place of that question, if that's okay. Um, so, well, so someone is asking, is there a live demo of this? So, is there somewhere we can actually see this tool in action, Justine? Justine, you still with us? Um, oh, thank you. No, we, we don't okay. prepare a video demo. There, there's not a video demo? Yes. Or, or is there a demo available that people can see? Um, no. Okay. Right. okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Justine, uh, and uh, thanks, L Luis, for trying to get involved as well. We'll see if we can um, get that question answered for the Dragons uh, offline. Uh, meanwhile, let's um, move it on. And next up, we have Kirill. So, Kirill, uh, we're going to give you ownership now. We'll get you on camera, and uh, there you go. Thanks very much. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. I'll share my screen in a second. We don't see you, just in case you're wondering if your camera is on. Oops, how about now? 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Dave. So I will be presenting ADA, a solution for augmented translation quality management. This is Sarah. She has joined Sloom, a fast-growing tech company, as its new localization manager. Sarah has over 10 years of industry experience, yet she feels this job will be a huge challenge. Sloom has thousands of employees and millions of users in over 150 countries. It creates more and more content in a dozen languages each month. Time to market is a core objective for Sloom, but so is customer experience and a strong global brand. Sarah's predecessor has done a solid job. He deployed a TMS and onboarded many suppliers. Not all of them are even human. LSPs, MT engines, freelancers, in-country reviewers are all at Sarah's disposal. But there seems to be a bit of a problem. Apparently, Sloom has quality issues. Dozens of complaints land on Sarah's desk every week from regional marketing, support teams, social media. The marketing copy feels unnatural. The support knowledge based articles uh, feel like machine translated, and customers in Japan are getting upset. And so is the CEO of Sloom. Sarah knows that she was hired to fix global customer experience. If she cannot make it in six months, she's out. Of course, Sarah has a plan. She used to handle this very well. Some emails here, some calls to vendors there, put some spreadsheets on top. Simple, right? Nope, not at the scale, not at this tempo. And Sarah's boss was very clear. There's absolutely no budget for a new hire this year. What is Sarah going to do? Enter Ada, a virtual translation quality manager. So uh, she helped Sarah tackle quality issues. Sarah is on the tactics and Ada is on the strategy. Uh, while Sarah is focusing on her daily job, Ada connects to the TMS and works 24 seven so that Sarah can have a break. Ada is proactive. She automatically measures quality. She alerts Sarah of quality issues and she shares feedback with vendors, human and machine alike. Ada has a great memory. She remembers all priorities and all historical data about quality and focuses on the key parts of the quality landscape based on the past data and future trends. Ada is also cost efficient. She invests Sarah's quality budget in the smartest way possible, doing the optimal decisions for what to measure, how to measure, and so on. No commercial product can do this yet. This is another innovation from Content Quo coming up for Christmas 2020. Thank you. Wow. Carol, we got to meet Ada, Sarah, a CEO who I wouldn't like to meet. I don't mind saying. <laughs> um, really cool and visual. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what the dragon said. Well, I, I go. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I, I I didn't know what to expect uh, looking at your application, but now clearly I understand. My question is: so, what is the the part that you innovated from your your let's say you you have quality management product, right? And Ada is a new one. So the new it's part a good feature is, that we're working on, correct? Uh huh. So so the innovative part is AI and twenty four seven. Is that correct? The, um, I think one of the key problems that we mm -hmm. found when talking to organizations managing quality is that starting to gather metrics on quality is actually very difficult. So yeah. companies have to hire a dedicated quality manager, or in case of large companies, they actually have to hire a whole team of mm -hmm. people managing quality. And then those mm -hmm. people can use different products, for instance, mm -hmm. content for existing product. And what the innovation mm -hmm. is, it basically allows smaller organizations not to hire a dedicated quality manager, because quality now can be managed as a part-time job by, let's say, a localization manager, right? And for larger companies, they probably can hire less people because mm -hmm. all of the tactics are automated for them with mm -hmm. ADA, and that's the core mm -hmm. innovation here. 
So it, it works autonomously, while as any existing solutions have to be powered by humans doing mm -hmm. both the thinking, both the decision making, but also the tactical actions, right? And the tactical part is the most tedious one that we're automating yeah. away here. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. Impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. I think you've answered one of the audience's question in part about what does it do under the hood. So um, we, we, we'll skip on and, and thank you, Kirill, uh, very much for that. And uh, we'll much. move on. Yeah. So Mark Mittag is next on our list and is going to talk about WYSIWYG for anyone old school who knows the acronym. Uh, what you say is what you get, translations for all file formats in a TMS. So Mark, let's get you set up with uh, sharing. And um, we have you on video. Um, can you hear us? Could, yes, I can hear you. Can you uh, press the sharing button again? Uh, accidentally, I pressed the escape button at the same time, then you tried to share it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so far, it doesn't come up. Okay, one second now. You should see it now. Yeah. Okay. So you see my screen? Yeah. And just before you you start, Mark, I'll just remind people: please ask questions. Great to see your questions coming in. Um, thanks for that. So somebody made a comment about Alessandra's earrings that they thought they were amazing. Those comments <laughs> are absolutely cool as well. I think you're right, by the way. So back to you, Mark, and uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay. Hello. Um, I'm talking about GraphMT errors fast and easy. Post editing with what you see is what you get. What's that? Sorry. I don't know why the video is not playing anymore. It says decoding error. Do you hear me still, Dave? Yes. We could try playing it from our end if you like. Yeah, um, let's let's do that. Sounds good. Uh, just give me a second, and we'll start you over on your time here, since this is a technical issue. I have to set myself as presenter. And uh, I wasn't going to mention the word déjà vu, but while Alex is uh, <laughs> saying that Mark has a wry smile, a couple of years ago, Mark was part of the pick, and uh, unfortunately, there was a um, major server issue in the servers in Stuttgart. Uh, right at the time he was presenting. So, Mark, we're going to solve it this time. We know we are. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> well, keep in mind, when I hit uh, play, you may need to unmute yourself. So just keep an eye on that. Okay, do you hear me again? Okay. Uh, I don't see the video right now, so I cannot talk about it. Uh, it is showing. Ah, uh, no, I see it. Can you go back to the start, please? Sure. Just a second, I have to start it again now. Sorry. We'll get it right, I promise. I have to switch between another video. Here we go. All right, you should be good, and I'm starting the video now. Your time will begin right now. Mark, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, now, can you hear me? Uh, can you go to the start of the video again? Sorry. Alex? Alex, we can't hear you. Sorry about that. So Mark, as soon as I hit play on the video, it's going to auto mute you. You're going to have to unmute yourself. We'll try it one more time. Yeah. We can get this okay. right. Um, all right, and going to the video. Okay, get ready to unmute yourself. Video is starting. 
go ahead and unmute yourself and you should be good. We can hear you now. Oh, now you're going again. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. So, Mark, let me intervene uh, one second. Sorry for stopping you. Um, we, we can't hear you very well. The audio on your side just dropped. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that if, if we come back to you at the end, if that's okay, and we see if we can solve on audio, maybe um, you need to dial in. Okay. So we'll come back to you at the, at the end of the presentations, Mark. Uh, great, thank you. And so Natalia, you're up slightly earlier than planned. We'll um, get Hello. you set up now. Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, can you hear up. me? I can hear you loud and clear. Um, mm, okay, I'm going to share my screen and you let me know if you see it. Yes, we can. I'm also trying to share my video, but I'm not sure. Oh, hi guys, <laughs> now it works. Okay, let me do the uh, full screen and I can start. I guess. Oops. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Um, I work as a localization project manager at um, Agilent Technologies, a company which manufactures and sells instruments for chemical analysis. And um, at Agilent, uh, we had a problem with the um, e commerce localization. Um, as the whole process was uh, not very straightforward. Um, it involved a lot of stakeholders and um, also many manual tasks. Um, so we have a product information management system called PIM, uh, which contains all product descriptions for our Agilent online store. Uh, it is around 45,000 part numbers with uh, both short and long descriptions. These descriptions are localized into six languages. Um, the data in PIM is constantly updated by product owners uh, who are supposed to um, inform localization team about these updates, but um, yeah, unfortunately they don't, don't do it all the time or almost never. Um, the data in PIM um, um, is there is another additional um, complication here. Um, there is no technical feature uh, to export only new or updated descriptions from PIM. And all you can get is just the whole database um, as of the current date. All that uh, actually created a problem uh, of not consistent localization of the product descriptions and relatively poor customer experience. Um, as I um, am responsible for e-commerce localization process, I developed a desktop application which compares current and previous versions of the database. Uh, this desktop app is a, uh, with a very simple Python script under the hood, um, has three different models. The first model here um, uses product ID as a key uh, and compares the two versions of corresponding product information and compiles a list of IDs for localization. Second model here checks if the IDs from the list are ready, are ready to go public, and if they are not, um, it includes it in the backlog uh, database. These IDs from the backlog are uh, checked again in the next round of localization. The third model of, of the script informs all the st stakeholders about the localization process and also um, sends information on what IDs are included in the process and which are not. Um, so as next step, um, we plan to implement this app into web pages localization process, SAP descriptions localization process, search engine optimization projects. Also right now we work only with Excel format, but we plan to develop um, additional um, 
feature to work with XML, CSV files, HTML files. So basically this approach can be used by anyone who needs um, to analyze huge amounts of data if there is no history of, of change or technical opportunity to extract only certain content. And basically it can be used for any ERP data analysis. And also I would like to say that it can be um, used practically by anyone because um, <coughs> It, is, it uses Python, which is a very easy to learn programming language with a variety of opportunities for automation. Thanks. Thank you very much, Natalia. Let's um, go straight to questions. Dragons. So what made you use a, um, create a solution with Python, not using the off-the-shelf solution? You didn't look for it or, or, or it was kind of impossible? Uh, um, well, actually, frankly speaking, um, I didn't look for it when I had this problem and uh, I just um, uh, had some knowledge because I, I started learning uh, Python myself and I realized that this is an opportunity for me to actually actually apply my knowledge. And then when I started working, I realized that I can actually do more uh, with Python, because if you saw, there, there there are several modules. One of them is actually sending notifications to people, which automates another part of my work. And mm -hmm. uh, basically, um, yeah, that was easier for me to um, maybe do that myself rather than <laughs> to try and find a solution which is already there and which would, uh, you know, um, meet all the requirements and solve but, all my problems. <laughs> but y y you're not engineer. No, no, I'm not. I'm localization project manager. And that's actually the beauty of it, because Python itself is uh, appeared to be a very simple um, programming language. And when you just do something um, at work and you can easily find um, application of this knowledge, you know, and that's what I did. So, yeah. OK, thank you. <clears throat> So, Natalia, I was wondering, oh, do we have time for another question? Or? Yeah, one quick okay. question. Um, I was wondering to uh, identify the change, uh, you know, in source. Why not just use TM matching? Um, well, um, because um, for us, I mean, our PIM works in such a way our pro, um, product information management system works in such a way that you can um, um, extract XML file and well that's actually what we do and send it to localization to our vendors right mm -hmm. and uh, um, they will have to uh, extract strings by themselves right and do some engineering work to get this, them out and then analyze it and um, actually this is a huge database it is 45,000 part numbers with uh, short and long descriptions. So we want to have um, only uh, the part which really needs to be updated, right? It needs to be localized, sent to the vendors instead of sending the whole thing to them. So mm -hmm. it's uh, more like about saving time and, and effort for everyone, specifically for vendors as well. One very quick uh, question from our audience. Uh, just cu they're curious, um, is the product available yet for the public or is this just an in-house uh, Agilent product at this point? Uh, well, yeah, right now it's just uh, in-house Agilent um, application, which um, we use uh, by ourselves for our needs. Um, but um, yeah, I think I was um, looking at um, some other speakers yesterday and then, and I saw that they um, actually open sourced some of their developments. So um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing the same just to share it with, with everyone so anyone can benefit from it. So watch this space. It sounds like Natalia, thank you very much for sharing your innovation. Thank you, guys. So Remy Blater is next up from Supertext. Remy, welcome. Welcome back, indeed, to the pick. Thank you very much. Um, we can't see you right now. Uh, we can see uh, your screen. Here I am. Over to you, Remy. Okay, thanks a lot for having me here again. Um, definitely my pleasure. I'm uh, Remy, I'm uh, the co-founder for Supertext. Uh, we are a translation agency in Switzerland, um, Berlin and Los Angeles. And um, 
one of the problems that we have as a translation agency is that the orders that we are getting from clients are getting smaller and smaller. The deadlines get shorter, and obviously the margins are getting tighter. And um, lately, we've got a lot of requests by email, or if you're a bit unlucky and the client gets your Skype account, they're coming in via Skype and it's like, can you translate this word and this sentence and so on. And what you do is you quickly translate it on the fly. You have no translation memory, no term base, because that's way too expensive for like one sentence, um, which really does not help the quality. Also, there is no consistency. And then you translated something important and doesn't go anywhere. So our idea was, why don't we convert this into a product? And what we did is um, we created a chat application where the client can enter his small translations and uh, basically press a start. And on top of it, he can actually chat with us. And then behind the scenes, what happens is the translator gets a notification um, on his desktop and um, he gets directly into an online CAD tool. We actually are using um, Translate 5 for Mark Mittag. So I can promise you his uh, products are better than his uh, presentation tools. <laughs> um, and inside there on the left, we implemented um, basically a chat solution for the, for the translator so he can translate with the client while he's translating. Uh, in the middle, you have the normal cat thing um, with translation memory, term base, and so on. Um, and once he's done, he can basically translate this with a click of the button. The, uh, the client gets it back and look at it, can ask more questions. And when it's done, everything gets uh, merged back into the normal translation memory. So next time, the stuff is still there. That's um, it from my side. Uh, ready for questions. Thanks, Remy. Dragons, what do you think? I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I have the same question as somebody who was uh, who, who who asked the question to Natalie. Uh, are you thinking of uh, uh, doing something with this? because it's it's a pity not to share this with somebody. For example, not with other LSPs, but for example, small startups and localization managers from small startups so, or, or, or scale-up can, can use this to manage their short and you know, quick uh, turnaround translation, for example. You, you mean to share the product or to share the service? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, we, yeah, at the, um, honestly, the product, we haven't thought about it because um, mm -hmm. basically at our heart, we are a translation agency and not exactly like a product company. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, why not? We, we could definitely think about it, no? Um, yeah. On the other hand, um, Translate 5 is out there. It's open source. Everybody who wants can integrate uh, that into Translate 5 if, if they choose to do so. Um, the whole thing around it is a little bit more complex than we imagined initially, so it took us a bit more time to build it. And the challenge is, or the biggest challenge we have at the moment is because it's chat, the client expects instant, also as it is written in the title, and to provide this is um, not as simple as we uh, yeah. maybe yeah, as, as you would think no it's quite um, a challenge to have uh, translators ready all the time mm -hmm. yeah thank you very much remy one quick question for you if you can just a quick answer uh, <clears throat> what's the kind of client adoption uh, for this tool so how many people are using that model and adopting this is a question from the audience um at the moment we we only have it online for our Biggest client, he was the first one to sign up, and um, there it's about 50 people that are using it now. Um, there, there's a marketing agency that works for that client. They're using it intensively because they always have very tight deadlines and lot, lots of last minute changes. So I think for those people, this is, um, this is gold. 
and uh, we do have to work out some internal stuff to really roll it out on a, a broader scale and then i think we can also give you a bit of a <laughs> better answer there yeah yeah wonderful well thank you very much again remy very interesting Glad to be here. you're welcome thank you <clears throat> all right so uh, next up is uh Walter. so Walter, we will um get and you just wanted to say uh, real quickly that we do have Mark back on the line. So after Voucher goes next, we'll give uh, Mark another opportunity to try, okay? I think that's a fair choice, uh, Alex. Okay. Okay, let me um, uh, share my screen, hopefully. Yes? We can okay. see you, hear you, and see the screen. Over to you, Voucher. Ah, well, the technology today, right? Even with the uh, outage in uh, Stuttgart. Um, Yes, let me uh, let me explain. First of all, uh, thank you for having me here actually uh, during this uh, this challenge. Uh, my name is Wouter Maagdenberg. Uh, I'm from the company called Text Media, and indeed, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, watch instead of read. That's what we are all about, and I do this by um, introducing you to uh, to Jenny. And Jenny is a highly skilled technical writer. Uh, she creates topics, manages its localizations, publishes at the end user guides, uh, but though at the same time, and via the same tools, she's now actually also capable of creating videos. Uh, Jenny uses a CCMS, Component Content Management System, and that's actually what she uses to uh, coordinate all, uh, all her work. And this CCMS uh, stores the topics uh, that Jenny and her team uh, writes in some kind of XML format. It can be data, can be XML, can be some other formats. Um, but what we did at text media we offered actually additional uh, technology to these platforms and connected the, also the interface of that CCMS to the text media SaaS environment. And that means that she is now able to push a button instead of uh, publish as PDF or save as uh, XML or whatever, also a button that's called publish as video. And that actually brings a uh, XML feed to, uh, to our platform. And in this case, uh, Jenny is actually going to publish uh, a topic on uh, how to lubricate the brew group of a certain coffee machine. And this is more or less a picture of how that looks like. So some XML goes to us and we create a video. And uh, that video that we create is actually able to uh, display two versions of it. On the one hand, we, we, we talk in the video world of animated videos and leveraging text, images, stuff like that. And on the other hand, you have the world of live action video, filmed video, fragments, video fragments, yeah, the, the Hollywood stuff, so to speak, made with a camera or a screen capture. Um, and actually, Alex, due to the uh, audio, I would like to uh, ask you to play a little uh, yeah, sample uh, to show the difference and hopefully the audience uh, understands what you see. Okay, as I hit play, make sure that you don't get muted, uh, Walter. Just keep an eye on your microphone. We're playing yes. now. Yeah, I'll, I'll let the... How to lubricate the brew group. 3,200 latte go. One apply a thin layer of grease on the piston, gray part, of the brew group. Two apply a thin layer of grease around the shaft, gray part, in the bottom of the brew group. Yeah, so what happens here is that we, we use the text that you will also see in the PDF, but not only on screen eh, or maybe a summary on screen, but also to audio. So we use some services to bring that text to speech and we use the timing of those audio fragments to time the video uh, and also the fragments of the video. So we can stretch these fragments if needed and make a difference between the German time length of a, of a fragment and the English one, for instance. Uh, but that's one thing we do. The other thing we can do is, of course, since we have all these chunks of, uh, of, of fragmented uh, text still as fragments, we can also send it off immediately to machine translation, for instance, and make sure that draft versions come back to the CCMS of Jenny. And Jenny has a um, colleague, and her colleague in this case is called Andrea, and Andrea is uh, responsible for the French. And uh, Alex, uh, as a final, uh, uh, to finalize this, please play me my, uh, my French uh, version, draft version of video. Lubrification du groupe de percolation. Lubrifier régulièrement le groupe de percolation tous les deux mois, afin que ces pièces en mouvement puissent continuer à bouger correctement. Appliquer une fine couche de graisse sur le piston, partie grise, du groupe de percolation. Yeah, that's enough for, for me, Alex. Um, 
I only wanted to show that this is brought back to the interface of the CCMS as a draft version. So uh, the Andrea in this case can immediately uh, correct it or send it off to human translators to, uh, to approve it. Uh, but I think that this method saves a lot of time, gives direct access to people of how the video looks like uh, instead of having video teams separated, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, our clients uh, like the fact that you can uh, easily uh, do this uh, quickly. Thanks. Very good, Vitor. Yeah, really interesting. Um, nice bit of, uh, well, we'll call it live video videos there uh, to illustrate the point well. So questions, do we have questions, Dragons? Um, hi, Vitor. I was wondering what MT engine and what text-to-speech, I mean, uh, speech engine do you use? Yeah, well, the MT engines are up to our customers. They mostly already have, of course, uh, solutions in place, and we uh, just uh, reuse them for them based on their own contracts. The same with the CCMSs that they use. We just interface with it. Um, and for the uh, text-to-speech, we actually contract with four different vendors in the world. Uh, the main ones, uh, the Googles. Uh, Google is one, Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. And that's what we combine to one solution. So our customers can actually choose between all the different voices and languages that these vendors offer all together. So there's a huge chunk of tens of different uh, and dozens of different languages and hundreds of different voices. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a, I have a question too. Um, what about updating videos? That's the thing that's usually the biggest pain. You know, something changes in the sources and you can essentially throw out the target. So how exactly. does that work? How will Time, how timely and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah, you ex ex exactly hit uh, hit the spot here. Uh, it's not only about creating, but of course also updating. So as soon as the technical writer updates a topic or a sentence or whatever, he reruns the process and he overrides or publishes the second version uh, at the same speed. Um, so that's exactly one of the main points to do this. Um, but and and there's some other reasons, but definitely. So it's about maintenance of big. Yeah, catalogs of, uh, of video, of uh, instruction videos mostly in, in a lot of languages. That's typically our sweet spot, yeah. So, um, Wouter, really interesting stuff. Um, I, I'll just make a comment that um, the, the winner last year had text dubbing in it. So obviously, very good topic to go with. Um, the couple of years ago, we had a winner from Video Localize who did something similar. Um, how's performance looking? So. Do you have statistics on content performance based on synthetic voices? You mean the adoption by the audience on synthesizer voices? Right, yeah. So yeah. any performance metrics that tells you, this is a question from the audience, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's not that I have definite uh, statistics that I can call a number right now, because what I luckily see uh, over time, we do this now for two, two and a half years, is that uh, the adoption is much higher today than it used to be two years ago. And that, uh, I think, has to do with two things. Audiences get used to synthesizer voices on the one hand, but also synthesizer voices improve rapidly. Um, and uh, so those two meet each other. So right now, it's not the biggest issue anymore. At day one, when we entered the company, they were oof, synthesizer voices. And now it's more, ah, we don't want human, it takes too long. So what do you have, you know? So, um, and we do test a lot, uh, especially with big brands we work for, they do A-B test everything um, to improve. And uh, there is a lot of technology now to also improve synthesizer voices with SSML technology uh, behind it. So you can do a lot. So it sounds like we'll see a lot more in this space as the general acceptance criteria has changed for, for that type of content. Thank you very much, Ryder. Really interesting. Well, thank you uh, for the attention and. Uh, this offer, this opportunity to present. Thanks. Okay, so we come back to Mark. So we're going to give it another go with Mark. And Mark, you've already uh, got some kudos from a fellow um, uh, innovator, uh, you may have heard, which uh, yeah. says that uh, Translate that 5 is just fantastic tool. So that's a good start. Let's see if we can keep it going. And um, I guess, Alex, we'll um, try and share this video again. Yeah. Alex, you show, show the video because you asked me to share my screen, but you show the video, right? Uh, yes. So just make sure, again, when I hit play, please just make sure that you're unmuted. It's going to auto-mute you. Just make sure you're unmuted when we go, okay? Let's try it again. Here yeah. we go. 
And just a second. Uh, uh, actually, someone just switched presenters on me. I got to do it again. One second. Okay. Pick translate. Here we go. Video is coming up. We're going to try it starting. It's playing, Mark. You just need to unmute yourself. Ah, it's in the background. Um, I did prepare for you a Transit 5 project with three tasks in ta three target languages. Transit 5 is an open source translation management system. I show you the new what you see is what you get feature of Transit 5 visual plugin that released, re released yesterday. For the English to German task, I assigned three different languages. Uh, three different language resources, DeepL, SMT, OpenTM2 as translation memory engine, and the terminology database. The task has been pre-translated against all three language resources. I opened the task, and now you see the original PowerPoint pre-translated on the fly by MT, TM, and terminology in perfect layout. Neural MT's most common errors are errors of understanding especially errors of context. MT cannot understand visual context. To find context errors quickly and efficient, the post editor needs visual context. So in Transit 5, the post editor reads through the layout. He sees segments highlighted by model fronts, risk prediction, which we saw yesterday, that likely need correction, like this one here. So he can click on one of these segments and correct the translation and save it. And you see the change. If he does not need risk, but he can do that in the, uh, by reading now through the whole document, and he can switch off and on the risk prediction highlighting. So this is the post editing process in the most efficient way you can think of. Another use. Usage scenario of Translate 5, what you see is what you get, is to use it in trans creation. Here we have an InDesign cover of a fashion magazine. It needs to be translated into German, yet the design should stay. Therefore, the job of the trans creator is to fit the text into the layout and trans create a phrase that fits for the German market. Thus, he clicks on Schuhe, die zum Schmelzen, die zum Schmelzen bringen, a phrase that no German would ever say so, and transcreate it to pumps for ladies. And voila, it fits into the layout. And the transcreator knows, because of the context, that this is not about melting shoes. So, the past of translation had been desktop CAD tools. The future is lightweight online post editing with what you see is what you get and risk prediction based on open source for all printable file formats plus integrated CMS and PIM systems. So that's it. Okay. Dave, I think you're muted. You missed me saying, sorry guys. It worked, Mark. Finally, it worked. <laughs> so excellent. Um, well done. Well done on persevering on that one. So let's uh, throw it over to questions. I am very, very sorry, but I couldn't see the demo. So I might be asking later. Sorry. I don't know what happened. I, I can't even see the cameras, videos uh, right now, your face. So it's contagious. Uh, Alessandra, Marcus, any questions for Mark? Uh, yeah, I was wondering, um, does it, it looks like it, it works great with printable formats. What about digital formats? Does it work with, with those as well? It works with any content that came, uh, comes from HTML, so any kind of CMS systems or PIM systems that can H send HTML uh, to us. Um, and it can also work for, um, for web applications like cloud systems if you use it um, with an integrated solution from a, um, 
from a company in the Netherlands called Riggy. So we have an, an integration there. So it basically works for any kind of visual formats you can think of. You also mentioned uh, in some of the information you submitted before that you can integrate it as a workflow step rather than you know integrating it with Translate 5. How, how would that work? Sorry, I didn't get the question. In, in the um, in the short script you submitted originally, it also mentioned that uh, you can integrate it as a workflow step into you know different systems. At least that's what I understood. How would that work? Ah, okay. Yeah, that uh, works. For example, with the cross, um, it's integrated as a workflow step in a cross workflow um, with the workflow automation. So when the Transit Five work stop, uh, workflow step um, is uh, yeah, it's, it's ready um, in, in across the data is transferred via API to Transit 5. API is highly, uh, Transit 5 is highly API driven. So you can automate anything you can do through the graphical user interface in Transit 5, you can do through the API as well. And uh, then you do the um, your correction or post editing job in Transit 5 in the way you want. And then it goes back to the uh, original system, translation system. Okay, thanks. Fantastic and open source and l looks good. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, l let's just jump back to one item before we start wrapping up today's session. Um, and there was a question from uh, uh, the Dragons to Justine and Louis from IBM. And we have an answer back. So I'll just ask the Dragons to have a look at their panels. They'll be able to see that uh, answer in the chat window. Uh, but for everybody who's listening, uh, it was about domains, and um, they they do have coverage for multiple domains on that, with uh, some caveats, uh, which was the relevant answer to that question. So let's um, let's move on. Let's get the screen sharing back to me, and uh, we'll talk about where we go from here. So, <clears throat> Okay, well, let's. Um, we'd we'd like to actually uh, get your input just before we wrap up. So, you know, wh what innovations areas interest you the most? Uh, we've just given you a few options, so you should be seeing a poll appear. If you don't mind, just fill it in, and we'll share results. Um, so, again, there's a poll that should have popped up. People are voting. Thank you very much. And we'll give that about 10, 15 seconds. Uh, feel free to vote for your favorite. So the question is, what innovation areas interest you most? You can choose more than one answer, by the way. I should have told you that earlier, shouldn't I? Uh, technology, language and linguistics, localization workflow, process and QA, anything AI, anything multimedia or audio. And we'll give it a few seconds. OK. And we'll close that now. Thank you. So let's share the results. Uh, and you should see, hopefully you're seeing the shared results, that 63% um, said technology, 31% uh, language and linguistics, 25% localization workflow, 50% anything AI, 38%. So the winner is technology. Don't add up the percentages because some people chose multiple answers they were able to. So <laughs> it is over 100% in this case. Uh, but technology and AI are leading the race here. So thank you very much for getting involved in that poll. We'll um, make those <laughs> results available post the event. Uh, great. Uh, so let's hide that. And um, let's uh, start to close out today's session. So you saw uh, seven fantastic innovators with their innovations today. Um, from, from Andy uh, starting us off all the way to, in, in the end, uh, of course, Mark. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, another seven. Uh, this was starting with John, and uh, who, who went on to show us a little bit about an internationalization and smart uh, tools around that. Uh, innovations went from internationalization to MT, from auto detection 
to on web pages to risk management, speech to text to watching and not reading, as we just heard a uh, short time ago. Uh, term extraction to WYSIWYG, BI to software. Uh, we got to meet Sarah and her new friend, Ada. We heard about dragons, magic, and snakes. That's the Python pun. Uh, and we had a couple of gremlins along the way. So a uh, bit of a, a mixed bag. That tends to be what we see in the pick. Um, thank you, all innovators, for making a big effort here. Uh, I'm glad that um, you took part. I hope you got something good out of it and wish you the very best of luck. Uh, I'd like to thank Dragons for their input as well. And their job isn't quite done yet. So the Dragons will um, uh, just add things up here. So Dragons will uh, need to consult on and make cast their votes and decide which innovators from both days move forward to the final, which is at Lock World Wide at the end of July. Uh, we will have at least six shortlisted innovators to pitch again uh, and maybe evolve their pitch if they like at that event at the end of July. Uh, the results of who got shortlisted will be published next week. Uh, also, one of you attendees will win a free ticket to Lock Worldwide just for being here. Um, and that includes people from yesterday and today. This will also be published next week. Um, after that, well, we'll come back with more interesting stories from innovators between now and the final. So you'll see some things on the lick, on the PIC channels, both pick.lockworld.com and Twitter and LinkedIn. So just remains for me to, uh, again, thank everyone for joining. Uh, thanks to the Dragons, Luca, Alessandra, Marcus. Thanks to Alex. And thank you for listening. That's our show. Have a great day and uh, weekend. And please do fill in our survey uh, when you receive a mail. That's it. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.